we now turn to Anton Ellenbrook of FAO to reflect on the forum's outcomes in relation to FAO's fisheries and aquaculture information and knowledge management agenda uh, and the need for future collaboration processes to, for FAO to support. Um, the information and knowledge management team, uh, Fish Info, provides access to data and IT services, promotes digital innovation and connects stakeholders. So I'll hand over to Anton, if we could play his video, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Anton Ellenbrook. I work in the Fish Info team of the FEO Fisheries and Aquaculture Division. And today I will quickly introduce you to what we have done in the Fish Info team with AI, but maybe more important, I will explain what happens at a higher level in FEO with the Rome call, where the objective is to leave no one behind. And if we talk about the 35 million fishers on the planet, plus the people that work in aquaculture, plus the people that work in processing and trade, we talk about a really significant number of people that stand to benefit, but also have some risk when we talk about artificial intelligence in fisheries and aquaculture. So the fish info team, we manage uh, data and IT services for the NFI division, but we also work with a direct involvement in digital innovation. We are active in projects. We are active in collaboration with other teams towards a digital future. So another aim is to connect stakeholders in the blue transformation. So we all know that the digital transformation is upon us. So how do we make sure that this also benefits people that have a lot to gain from improved technologies in fisheries and aquaculture? Our team also holds a secretariat of several partnerships, for instance, in the fisheries and aquaculture domain, but also people that work in knowledge management and document repositories, for instance, the OSFA team. We're also active in statistics and geo info, data harmonization and standardization, and that is then visible in, for instance, applications like the firms and uh, fisheries and resources monitoring system, of which you see an example in the bottom right of the screen, where you should see all the harmonized and standardized fisheries data accessible through maps, but also accessible through repositories and other data entry systems. So a few examples of what we do with the Fish Info team in terms of digital innovation. So on the right, you see already an example of how we detect fisheries in agriculture. This was an experiment done with uh, Google TensorFlow, but we also work to identify coastal land cover and classify what we see in the images, for instance, using a random forest approach. On the bottom right, you see an example of a land use classification over South Sulawesi and the confusion matrix that comes with the random forest. We also try to monitor some human activities with remote sensing, but there it is obvious that there are lots of uh, questions surrounding uh, artificial intelligence. So what can we see, for instance, in aquaculture case occupancy? We can really detect and see what people are doing in an individual cage. But is that the information that we really want to get from the field and use an FAO or other organizations to monitor aquaculture, don't we have a lot of artificial intelligence uh, ethical uh, problems there? Other options that we are currently discussing is options in fisheries. So what can we see from remote sensing in fisheries? But also there are a lot of questions surrounding the proper use of technologies, uh, including artificial intelligence in monitoring of what's happening on the open oceans and in fisheries uh, themselves. So we do not try to answer these questions by ourselves. So the team has a lot of uh, collaborations. So a few of the examples that we have in the collaborations uh, ongoing at the moment are in a blue cloud project, which is a Horizon 2020 project, where we only uh, not only work in fisheries and aquaculture, but there are other teams, not in FEO, that work, for instance, on plankton image classification models, but also plankton distribution models that start with a genome sampling in the Atlantic Ocean, but, uh, and people that work on essential ocean variables. In all three cases, there is a lot of artificial intelligence to increase the knowledge that we have on the oceanic systems by applying AI on uh, samples and um, location-based observations. We also collaborate with NFI teams, and I think this uh, seminar is a fantastic example of a cross-team uh, collaboration here, more focused on image analysis, and then some examples of images uh, on the bottom right. So then after the quick team introduction, so what happens at uh, an FAO level? Uh, there's one important initiative going on that is the Rome call on artificial intelligence, leaving no one behind. The Rome call for artificial intelligence was assigned um, on the 28th of February of 2020, and it's a joint declaration of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, FAO, the Pontifical Academy for Life, IBM, and Microsoft. 
with the invitations open to others to join the same initiative. It's a high level agreement on the use of AI in the food value chain, and it underscores the ethical importance of properly contextualizing AI activities to leave no one behind. So what is actually contained in the Rome goal? It has six main principles that I will uh, quickly read out. So it's about transparency. In principles, AI systems must be explainable to users and the wider public. They must be inclusive. So we need to take uh, care of all the human beings in uh, and make sure that everyone can benefit and all individuals can be offered the best possible conditions to express themselves and develop themselves. We need to have responsibility in the system. So those who design and deploy the use of AI systems must proceed with responsibility and transparency. The systems must be impartial. We do not want to create or act according to bias. The safeguarding fairness and human dignity in all our systems that we deliver. They must be reliable. So all AI systems must be able to work reliable, not only today, but we have already seen some presentations. So how do we transfer from one situation to another that is in a good example of that we need reliable AI systems. We also need to provide uh, and offer security and privacy. So AI systems must work securely and respect the privacy of users. I already explained to you how did we really meet this uh, limitation already if we start to monitor fisheries and agriculture with remote sensing technologies. But it's a really valid inclusion in this goal. So for me, I believe this conference showed a lot of awareness around the topic of, uh, of the call. So let's seize the opportunity to heed this call of uh, the Rome call and build a community that makes AI work for the benefit of all. Thank you very much for, and hope you had a good meeting. Thank you very much, Anton, and thanks for sharing FAO Fisheries Community and Global Partnership work and its development of acceptable norms. And I think this is really one of the key um, messages coming out of the meeting. We've, we've heard about some of the key technical developments that we're working on, whether it's trying to identify species, whether it's trying to measure species, and the number of presentations in the, that regard will be made available later for people who are on, on the wrong time zone. We've also heard about some of the social issues. Obviously, we cannot just develop algorithms and expect the answers to flow, and even if the answers do flow, whether they'll be acceptable. And we need also heard from most presenters that it was a case that they needed all pillars to keep up the overall ecosystem of AI, a bit like what um, Hassan was mentioning earlier, and how we bring all these pieces together, seeing as with the, the number of presenters coming from small teams based all around the world, how do we share the, the wins and, and also share the failures so that we can help each other reach extend our reach and allow us to develop at a speed which is required in under the requirements that we have on us today.